This video I want to look at loading JSON data, not from a local file, like a file like birds.json that's right there in your project, but from a URL. And this is one step along the way to querying an API, to saying like, hey, weather map thing, give me some weather data, or hey, New York Times, give me some New York Times data. So, but I'm going to start simpler than that. But so, so first of all, this is actually really, really easy in the sense that all I need to do is replace birds.json with a URL that gives me JSON data, but it brings up a question about how you work with loading data beyond just this preload thing. So the preload idea was super convenient. It guarantees that all the data is loaded before the program starts. So you've got all the data, you can do anything you want with it as the program's running. But this breaks down very quickly and very easily. So for example, here's a scenario where you want to have a, a, some sort of weather visualization, like you're going to show uh, the sun if it's sunny out or some rain if it's raining and you have a button that just says like load data. So every time the user presses that button it should get the most recent data, the, the current weather. So you can't use preload for that because you can't preload the future. Boy, wouldn't that be great. So when you invent the whole like time travel thing you can use preload, like preload time. Maybe that's how we get time, I don't know. Um, but um, you can see how this doesn't work, right? You can't preload the data. You've got to load the data while the program is running. Uh, you know, certainly you could also make the same case of as a program is running, you just want to continuously, like if you're trying to visualize financial data and it's just like changing every three seconds, you know, in your draw loop, you might want to query the data and query the data and query the data. You also don't want the program to stop animating while it's waiting to load the data. So you need to load the data in what's known as an asynchronous manner, meaning the when the, the data can arrive at another sort of in another sort of like parallel universe of your code that's running. So your code is trucking along, it's starting, it's animating, it's looping, it's doing its stuff. And at any point there, you could say, hey, load some data and let me know when the data is loaded. So how do you do that? Right? We said but previously in preload var birds equals load JSON. This is the synchronous way, right? Preload loads the data, the program waits and waits and waits and waits to start. The asynchronous way is to just simply only call the load JSON function, pass it the path of the data that you want to load, birds.json or some URL, and then what's known as a callback function. So I'm going to call my callback function got data. So this, by the way, is exactly a topic that I discussed in a previous set of videos all about looking at uh, uh, HTML elements like buttons and sliders and what happens to have a callback when you click the button. So I'll, I'll try to have a link back to the video about callback and events. This is exactly the same idea here. I now need to write a function to handle the asynchronous nature of the data arriving later at some other time separate from my program that's running in its animation loop. So if I say function got data, this function is the callback for loading the data. I'm starting a process. Hey, go and load some data, and when you're done, let me know. The let me know is trigger the code in here. Now, this isn't magic. This isn't some like default thing that just happened. You know, this is sort of the nature of how just about everything in JavaScript works. But load JSON and this methodology, this is specific to the P5.js library. Of course, with native JavaScript or jQuery or all these other frameworks, they all have something similar to this. So conceptually, this is a kind of concept that's a sort of across the board in working with data. But this syntax and this function name is specific to p5.js. So I give it the URL, I give it the callback, and then this function's triggered and when the data is ready. Like, the data is ready! So I got some singing in, that's good. Um, the question is like, where is the data? Like I've completely lost, like here, the data is in this variable called birds. That's very obvious. I'm saying birds equals load JSON, but there's no variable anywhere. There's just the URL, the load JSON function, and the callback. So the special way that p5 works and that a lot of things in JavaScript works, is if you add a uh, parameter to your function definition, your callback definition, I'm calling it data, P5 behind the scenes will fill that variable in the function with the data. So it's like you said this data variable equals the result of load JSON, but it happens asynchronously. Load JSON from this URL, when you're done, trigger this function. When, when that function's triggered, the data will be in that variable. Got it? I don't know what to do. That's all I can say about it. But send me your 
your, in, your, your messages, uh, in, in, the, in write them and give a carrier pigeon or Twitter or whatever, email, contact me, say hi, I need, human interaction is a useful and important thing. So let's make that happen over here, right? So in other words, instead of just, instead of saying uh, data equals load JSON, I want to say, and I don't want to have preload actually at all, like I could actually just here, I could say, and actually let's, I could say, I'll just put it in setup. I'll, I'll make this more interesting later. Um, I could just say load JSON birds.json. <laughs> They're coming for me. Help everybody. <clears throat> my, my heart is racing a little bit, so maybe somebody knows that I might need some medical attention. Um, birds.json uh, is uh, the name of the file. Uh, got data is going to be the name. That's a name that I'm making up for the callback. I'm going to create that function called got data. I'm going to give it a parameter right there. So now this is the process. Start the process of loading the data. When it's loaded, execute this function, fill this uh, variable with data. And now I can say console.log data, or just, uh, sorry, print line. I like to use the, doesn't matter, but I just want to see that this works. And I'm going to run this and you can see that's happening. It's happening super fast because the data uh, is lo loaded and then this is triggered. Um, great, it works. <laughs> So now let's, 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 let's move on from this bird's data set and let's think about what it means now to pass a URL into that function and how we might you know, query the data uh, at a particular moment in time while the program's running. So what I want to do is I'll use a simple, um, an API that I like to use, which is uh, uh, a, a URL for JSON data that I like to use. This is really, which is, uh, um, which is, tells us, <laughs> how many people are in space right now? So I'm going to go grab this URL right here. Uh, I'm going to paste it into the browser just to see that this works. And you can see, look at this. I, uh, this, this URL is giving me JSON data. What is it giving me? It's giving me information about the number of people in space. And you can see it has, it's an object with a number six. And it's got then an array of people with their craft, the International Space Station, and their name. So the number of people currently in space is six, and these are all the people, and, this, and that's the spaceship that they're on. Now, ideally, it would be great if this was a data set that like, changed very often. So if you hit refresh, it'd say seven, and then eight, and then four. But I guess people aren't like going to and from space very often. So this isn't like necessarily the best demonstration of why you would need this. Um, but we'll, in some future videos, I'll get to data that's sort of changing or that needs to be refreshed um, in your program. So all I need to do now, if this works, is take this particular URL and paste it right in here. So you can see that load JSON works not just with a local file, but with a particular URL. And now if I run this, ooh, I don't see anything. I wonder, hmm, interesting. And I didn't even get an error. I'm going to just add something. Close your eyes and don't pay attention to what I'm doing. Yeah, it worked. Okay, so this is a good moment to have this discussion. Security is a, is a, is a thing, <laughs> right? Authenticating with a name and a password and you know, allowing a browser, a, 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 your browser on your machine to talk to your camera or to talk to another server. Working with data opens up this kind of big can of worms of what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. And there comes a time in your life where you'll find a URL and that URL, you know it gives you JSON data because I pasted it into the browser right there and I see that JSON data right there, but I put it in my load JSON function and like nothing happened. Now, honestly, I didn't even get an error here. There's a bit of a secret that I think I'll show you, which is right up here in the browser window, there's, a, there's this like settings uh, and I can click on that and I can get some more error messages. And you can actually see the error message that came. XML HTTP request cannot load this. No access control allow origin is head is present. Origin is therefore not allowed access. This error message is like the bane of my existence. I always forget that it might happen and sometimes it doesn't happen and sometimes it does happen. This has nothing to do with you or me. This has to do with how the server, the place that the, the URL address is configured. And this URL does not necessarily just allow you by default to grab the data. However, there is something called JSON P. The P stands for padding. I like to think of it as like a safety net. It's like I'm in a room with padded walls and I won't hurt myself asking for the JSON data. And I feel like that would be an interesting topic for another video to delve into that more deeply. So 
Sometimes if you're not allowed access in the sort of traditional way, you can use this thing called JSONP to get the data. And you know the one of the ways that I do is I like put the URL in load JSON and when it doesn't work, I just add JSONP and I hope that it works. And usually it's gonna, you know, I try it first without it. If it doesn't work, I try it with it. Um, you know, you can write your, uh, I'll maybe include a link to more information about JSONP um, in the description of this video. So what do I mean by adding it? So it's an optional third argument to the load JSON function. So the load JSON function requires a URL and the callback. And optionally, you can add a third argument, which is the string JSONP, which allows you to get past this access origin control crazy error thing that sometimes comes up where the server's not allowing you to get plain JSON. You need JSON with a little padding. There's no padding over here. Hurt a little bit. Okay, um, I'm very sensitive, <laughs> fragile uh, person. <clears throat> so anyway, so fortunately, uh, if I type JSONP uh, as that third argument, it's good that that happened because it's going to happen to you. And I run it. You can see that the data is now arriving there. I'm seeing it. So let's do something with this data and to finish off this particular video that's already 11 minutes long. So if I look at this data, one thing I might like to do is just uh, just like draw a circle for every single person that is um, I'll draw a circle for every single person that's in space right now. So interestingly enough, if I know that the data is available in the got data function, that's a place where I could do some drawing. So for example, I could say for var i equals zero, i is less than data dot number, right? That's the number six, i plus plus. And I could say ellipse at random width, random height, 16, 16, I could say fill 255. This is going to be the least interesting data visualization anyone has ever made in their entire life. But we can now see, and I could say uh, create canvas, 200, 200. I can now see that when I run this, I now get this lovely canvas with six circles on it. So this is, look, I did data visualization. I loaded a URL. I gave it a callback. I even used JSONP for some padding. And then or I, I have my padding song, but that's different. That's like CSS. Anyway, uh, I would I need a separate video, which is just the padding song. But um, and then I pulled out the number. I made a little loop, and I draw six, and I drew circles based on how many people are in space. And if I could just like keep refreshing this, you know, I'll get in a different location. But if somebody would just leave space right now, <laughs> then you would see five circles instead of six. So this is the basic idea. I do think, however, there are a couple other pieces of this that I want to demonstrate, although you could, you could stop watching now if you want. You could stop watching it anytime if you want. So one thing is I did, it was kind of nice. Like, this is just static. I don't need anything to animate here. So I just put the drawing stuff in got data. But let's say what you actually wanted to do was have a particular animation that's going on. So you want your, like for example, I want the background, uh, I want to have, um, this isn't going to be interesting, but let's say I want uh, to have this like line that goes across the screen from uh, x to zero, x to height, uh, x equals x plus one, and if x is greater than width, you know, x equals zero, and I say stroke uh, 255. So in other words, I want like the circles to appear with like this animation. So if I were to put the drawing right back in got data, I know I'm doing this kind of quickly and I, uh, scrolling around like a madman here on the screen, but right, this is not going to work because remember draw is looping to always draw that animation. Got data is an event that happens just once when the data is ready. So this is, that happened and it drew those circles, but it immediately got overridden by draw. So there's an easy solution to this problem, you might think, which is like, OK, just take the circles and put them here in draw. So now what's, so this is, there's a lot of problems with this. Let me run this. OK, first of all, it's not working. <laughs> Why is it not working? Now, hopefully I probably have some error message, which we could see. Uncaught reference error data is not defined. Well, of course it's not defined. I can't use this variable data down here in draw. Got data is a callback. That variable data is only available in that function. So one thing I could do is I could say var, you know, I'm going to say space data. I could make up a global variable and I could say space data equals data. 
So this is now one, I need a way of like, this is a sort of simplistic way of doing it, but it'll work. I need a way of connecting the data that came in to something that's happening in draw. And a quick way of doing that is just have a global variable. So I want to ask for the data. When the data comes in, I immediately store it in some other variable, a variable that I can access in draw. So now if I run this, and you can see me accessing it there in draw, if I run this again, ah, now what's happening? Oh, I, sorry, I, have to, I have to change this to space data. Ah, cannot read property number of undefined. Ooh, what happened? Ah, what's not, what's not working? I know it's not working. I'm pausing to let you think about it for a second. Asynchronicity, if that's even a word, I'm not sure, but this is the issue. Remember, how are all of these, what's the sequence here? Let me try to get everything here on the screen. And let me, uh, let's just uh, move this animation for a second below here so we can see like the pieces that matter, right? There's setup where I'm asking to load the data. There's got data where I'm retrieving the data. And there is draw where I am using the data. What's the order of the program? Setup starts first. Make the canvas. The canvas is there. Load the data. That's a process that's now happening in the background. Let's go to draw. Start drawing. Draw with space data. The data's not loaded yet. This is going to take a while. You've got to query the URL, make some connection across the internet, get the data back. So space data is not anything until this happens, but draw has already started. So there is a nice way of dealing with this. And it has to do with a, kind of a nice trick that you can do in JavaScript, which is using a Boolean test, an if statement, which is a concept you're probably quite familiar with. We usually think of a Boolean expression as something that evaluates to true or false. Like, if 7 is greater than 5, this is absolutely true. But what does it mean for me to say if space data? Now, one of the nice things about JavaScript is it just like all it ever wants to do is to have things be true or false. <laughs> like, a number it can be evaluated to true or false. Like, if it's 0, it's false. If it's any other number, I think it's true. Uh, a string probably could be evaluated. If it's like the string, false, that's probably going to evaluate to false. So what's, what is actually the value of space data before the data comes in? It's undefined. If you have a variable that's not initialized, like up here, space data is not initialized, its initial value is undefined. And undefined evaluates to false. So space data and defined like an object just automatically evaluates to true. So you can basically say if space data as a way of saying if space data exists. So space data, it doesn't exist until the data has actually come in. So if I just add that, oops, oh, I'm in the, I was in the wrong view. You're going to have to live with that. Um, I can right here, I can say uh, if space data, then do this. So now, even though draw starts looping, this part of draw won't actually happen until space data gets filled here. And now we can see this works. Now, of course, I'm drawing them at random locations. Here's actually a really quick trick for me to get that to stop. I could just say random seed. It's kind of a topic for another video. But random seed is a function that seeds the random number generator. So I always get the same exact sequence of random numbers. And that's going to work for me here, at least just in a sort of quick and dirty way. So you can see I now have an animation and a visualization at the same time. I'm not drawing the part with the data until the data has come in. So I kind of, this was like very long winded, this particular video. <laughs> like I probably could have done this in half the time. But what I would suggest to you right now, if you're looking for an exercise to do, is go to this particular data source. I'll link to it below and see if you can at least add now add the people, like what could you add the craft and the name as like text next to the circles or something? Or can you use the rest of the data here also and quickly get it to work in this asynchronous callback way? And I think now we've actually covered enough that the next step can really be is like, well, what, do you, what if you've got an API like the New York Times or Instagram that's serving up data? How do you query that API with load JSON and do stuff that way? Okay. Boy, this was a 20-minute video. Ooh, I, I, I don't know about this.